On this next block, we're going to use a little bit of ruler work, a little bit of scallops, and some wishbones. So let's get started first with the ruler work. What we're going to do is we're going to sink the needle like I have in the very point of the upper triangle. Then I'm going to put my ruler beside my foot and keep it about a quarter of an inch away from the tip at the top, right up here. And the reason for that is you have to allow for the thickness of the foot. Now we're not going to stitch all the way up. We're only going to stitch to where the two fabrics meet in this block. So just follow what I'm doing here. So we're going to stitch up, and now we're going to stitch across to about a halfway between where we came up and the seam line. And we're going to stitch back down again. Remember, keep your ruler about a quarter of an inch away so it'll line up right in the point. Now we're going to again aim for about halfway to the halfway point but back it up about a quarter of an inch. And you'll have to excuse my puppy. Apparently he hears somebody at the door. Okay, now we're going to ditch this block by going back and then across again so that we have the two fabrics and the sections separated. Okay, so we have our ruler work done. Now, that ruler work actually is giving us guidance as to where we're going to make our scallops because we want each of the scallops to end at the ruler stitching. So we're going to come up and down. So that's our first row of scallops. Now we're going to add to the top of the first scallop here. Come around, make another one, just meet it in the center. And again, this is one of those times, as always, when you're free motion quilting, you don't want to look at your needle. You want to look at where you're going to. So now I'm going to come back up this triangle and over to the center of that scallop and stitch across. Always hitting the center of the scallop. Now let's come up a little bit and come down to the center of that scallop, the center of that scallop. center of the scallop. And just like that we have all our scallops done. Now you probably can't see it so well because I'm stitching white on white. So let me pull it out and show you the dimension. Now can you see the scallops? And you can see the ruler work is not as defined but you can see the scallops and that's what quilting is all about just seeing the highs and lows we're now going to do some ditching on the inside of this block to make part of the block pop up so we're going to start from this point here and work all the way down Take your time. Again, there's no rush in your quilting. This is the part that you're supposed to enjoy doing. If you try to rush through it, you'll, you'll find yourself making so many more mistakes. So now that we've done that leg of this block, while we're here, let's go and finish our fishbone 
or wishbone in this area. So we're going to do that by going halfway up again. And here we go. Now that gets us to the other side. At this point, we can stitch up part way. We're going to go across here, up, across here, up, and over. in the ditch. Across there. Now we've already stitched this, so we'll just stay in the same line of stitching we did before. Now we're going to come across this way in the ditch. Now, we have not ditched this one little section right here. So when we put our ruler down so that we can stitch this long leg, we're going to first backtrack, catch that piece, and now let's go forward. And you don't have to worry so much about backtracking because the ruler keeps your stitches exactly where you want them to be. going to go all the way up. Now we want to do the wishbone stitch in this portion. So let's back halfway down and now you're going from the opposite end. So now you're going to come down here around and go up. But it's nice to learn this stitch so that you can do it either from right to left or left to right because it is a really nice stitch to use for sashing, for small areas like this, and it's so versatile, but it's even more versatile when you're able to do it in either direction. Okay, so now we still need to do a cross here. So let's come back down. Let's stitch and stitch across this block. Remember, we already ditched here, but it's okay. We're just going to cross right over that ditching again. And now we're going to come across the other end. Now we're going to keep going because we need to ditch this portion. And it's just little things like that as you're quilting, you figure out in your mind, okay, I've ditched this, I haven't ditched that, what do I need to go next? So we need to do the wishbone, and then we need to do it along this side so that this portion of the block sticks out. So let's go ahead, come down here, and stitch in the ditch right here. Mm -hmm. 
Now let's go over here. Now let's start our wishbone again. And again, now we're attacking it from another angle. We're going from bottom to top. So when you're practicing your fishbone, try doing it from all different angles. Right to left, left to right, bottom up, and from the top down. And you'll be all set. Okay, so that's done. Now we need to get over here to ditch We've already ditched uh, this side, we need to ditch this side, and we also need to do our wishbone. So we're going to put our ruler down once again, and we're going to ditch across. stitch right here. And we want to go across this block because we haven't done that yet. And now we're ready to do the last of our wishbones. gentle swing from one side to the other. It's kind of a relaxing stitch actually. And we'll stop again in the middle. Now if you can't see, because my arm's always in the way and I apologize, but if you can't see the dimension, let me hold this up for you. And now you can see that the wishbone makes dimension, as do the scallops. I hope you can see that on film. Now, oftentimes when you're quilting, you'll have things occur that you hadn't thought of when you designed how you were going to quilt your quilt. And that includes things like, what happens if this gets too puffy? Because we've, we've stitched everything and now all the batting is, is in this area, but it just kind of sticks up too much. So, let's fix that. I'm going to make sure that those are laying straight. Let me get my gloves on here. You don't want to distort your pleats while doing this. So, your foot over top of there and all we want to do is take a stitch from one corner to the other on this pleat. So I'm going to pull my bobbin thread and again when I go back under make sure you're keeping your pleat straight and I'm going to stitch from one corner of that little square tuck that formed over to the other, just diagonally. I'm going to take a few stitches in place and I'm going to lift my needle. And I'm going to come over here 
And for those of you who like to tie your threads rather than just clipping them off, you want to pull out a lot of thread so you have a lot of thread left to clip when you're tying. But rather than cut right now, we're just going to come to this next section. We're going to lower our needle. And I'm just going to take a couple stitches in place to tie it off and go across. A couple stitches to lock that in place. Now I'm going to pull out my thread again and I'm going to go across the other way. I've got these two going in this direction. I'm going to have these two also going in that direction, but we're going to have to start from the bottom so we don't cross over our thread. Again, make sure that you keep your pleat straight, sink your needle, do a couple tack stitches, and go across. A couple more tack stitches. Lift your needle. Again, we're going to sink our needle. A couple tack stitches. And now we've solved the problem of this being so puffy without really detracting from the grid work there.